All right, today we're gonna review the Isheen US 65. There's a lot of other reviews out on this, so I'm not gonna go through all the weight and specs, and I'm gonna just link to you. Nick Burns has a great review on this. He goes through all the specifics, all the weight, shows slight videos. At the end of the day, this flies pretty good. Uh, it's a fairly inexpensive uh, brussels whoop. It has 1400 kV motors on it, 2S. There's some things I don't love about it, so we'll talk about those. And then we'll go through an update from Betaflight 3.5.7, which comes stock on it to Betaflight 4.2, and the latest BL Heli M firmware. And we'll show how to put that on here so you can get your latest and greatest on this great flying whoop. What I don't love, I'm not ecstatic about these ET 2.0 connectors. These are called ET 2.0 connectors. You know, it's supposed to be better for you know, batteries, uh, voltage sag, shouldn't be as you know steep on these, just like the BT 2.0 connector, but these are slight variants. These have this, this notch in here. What I don't love is none of the batteries out in the market are these, except for Isheen's batteries so far. So, you know, you're kind of stuck unless you're gonna buy other batteries and then buy these connectors separately and clip them and solder them all together, which is a pain in the butt. The other thing that's not perfect about it is they're really snug in here. So snug that I, you can see I took the sticker off of there, which is not that big of a deal. But if you take the sticker off and then kind of squash these ends down, then you can get them in there. But it is a tight fit for sure. I mean, you're sliding that one in, not too bad. And then you have to slide the next one in this piggyback case here, but it is, it's, it's, it's snug. They're not gonna slide out. And with the, you can see I can slide it in there. Definitely with the sticker on the batteries, it's a real pain. The sticker kind of starts to peel off and stuff. So, you know, just take the sticker off. Those two things aren't that big of a deal. You just, you know, the battery connector, obviously you can switch these out uh, for your pH uh, connectors on there, which are kind of the standard. And then you're off to the races once you switch these to pH connectors as well. And then you can just use your regular batteries, obviously switch these over. If you're not into that, you can obviously just pick up additional batteries from Isheen. Then you have them. They should last a while if you take care of them. It's not that big of a worry. The other thing I wasn't ecstatic about is just the defects in this charger. You can see this port, these prongs are kind of bent so I can bend those back over. That's not too big of a deal. But this one is backwards. So it's actually turned around. So if you try to plug this in with the notch where it needs to be, this would you know, be negative to positive, positive to negative, that would not be good. So I noticed that and they're glued on there pretty darn good. So I don't know how I'm gonna actually fix that one. Obviously the one over here, I can just bend those prongs, I just didn't do it yet. Um, but this other one here, I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna get that off. So. You know, just the QA on that was not perfect. Maybe it's just a, you know, reviewer's model of it. But uh, this does have the pH connectors on there as well. So that is nice. And it's a pretty standard charger. I just, you know, wish that wasn't goofed up like that. Again, that all being said, this flies really good. And I see the durability being there as well. So the next thing we're gonna do on this is we're gonna flash it up to the latest BL Heli firmware out there. And also Betaflight 4.2 put all the little fancy bells and whistles on it and my tune and then gonna go ahead and fly it again. So this is the latest BL Heli configurator. It actually enables us to flash up to the latest BL Heli M firmware, uh, which is a, a variant of the Jazz Maverick that just renamed it to BL Heli M. So anyways, I connected my USB port there. I'm gonna go ahead and connect here. It reads setup. It's nice since this is a whoop, I don't need to power up with a battery going to go ahead and you can see it has BL Heli S on it. That's the 16.7 release. We're gonna take note that it's SH50. So right there, that tells us it's a 50 dead time limit. Just a little side note information there. Gonna select our latest BL Heli M. Gonna go ahead and hit flash and then just let that flash up for each one. Once that is flashed up for all of them, you can see right here, we're gonna leave these two, this Async PWM, that is the latest and greatest. So as you can see there's some other options here. I'll drop a link where you can check out some documentation on what these things are. We're not gonna get into that for right now, 
Uh, this is kind of in development, so these are, I would say, more beta features. But what I really want out of here is this PWM frequency. It's so nice with this firmware, you can just select which one you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this uh, 96 kilohertz a try. I've, uh, it's well known that on Whoops, if you go from 24, which was what it was on before, just BLLES generally is 24 kilohertz PWM. And on Whoops, if you switch that up to 48 kilohertz, it saves on battery life. So you can see it was getting about four minutes and 25, 26 seconds on flight time. 48 kilohertz would give us longer flight times. I have not messed with 96 kilohertz yet, but people say it's even longer. So let's go ahead and put up to 96 kilohertz and see what we get. So selecting 96 kilohertz here, I'm gonna leave these two as default right there. I'm gonna leave everything else alone and hit right setup. We can see it was successful. And from there, we're just gonna disconnect. So after upgrading to BL Heli M, I didn't really notice any battery savings going up to the 96 kilohertz mode. I'm getting around a four minutes, 30 seconds, 25 seconds of flight time, which is decent, but I thought it was gonna increase a little bit. So I don't know if the BL Heli S version they had on there had 96 kilohertz PWM or not. I did, however, once I upgraded from Betaflight 3.5.7 to Betaflight 4.2.3, I did notice in some scenarios, I had about 30 seconds fl more flight time, so I was getting up around the five minute mark in some cases. So let's touch on that, show you my settings for Betaflight 4.2.3, and let's get off of that Betaflight 3.5.7 stuff. And we don't wanna live in the past. What I recommend doing is doing a diff all before you flash it up, and I will paste my diff all down below in the video description if you need it, and that would be basically the stock. So if you do need that, you can paste that back in. Uh, I will, the one I paste back in, I'll actually clip out the stuff that you probably shouldn't paste back in, so kind of like the filter defaults and PID stuff. The PIDs they had on it were okay, but not generally aligned for what I see from whoops. Generally your PDD balance and stuff, I'll show you in the sliders here, are, are more equal and that's not what it had on this done the faults. I think it flies a lot better with the updated PIDs and the better filtering and things of that nature. So again, I'll paste that down in the video description if you do, do forget to do a default, or even if you do, my pace will have kind of the core settings you'd need for this, like the ports, tabs, setup stuff, and things of that nature, but it won't have the things that you probably shouldn't carry over from an older version to the newer version of Betaflight. So anyways, if you paste my diff in, you will get all this set up again. It only has the two, really it's a serial, and then the VTX, TBS Smart Audio. Let me expand that a little bit. So what we generally want to do is, generally what I see for PDD balance on a WHOOP is one-to-one -one PDD balance. So we want to have the D, the P term and the D term about equal. So that is about a 1.4 on the slider for PDD balance here. And then I would generally see that the D gains are in the high, in the 60s, usually mid to high 60s, maybe even the 70s and 80s. You could push this up higher, but this seems to fly fine. So I would recommend 1.4, 1.5 to start. And if you want to mess with some stuff, you can keep moving this up to get even better prop wash performance. I would leave these as defaults, this as default as well. And you can go ahead and adjust your angle strength to your liking. If you're flying in air mode, the higher the angle strength here, the more responsive it will be to your stick move. So your stick moves in angle mode are controlled by this, not so much by your rates in the rates tab. Moving on to the filters tab, we're just gonna do kind of the standard RPM setup. We're gonna move both sliders up to 1.5, 1.5 here. Just leave this as default. We are gonna change this to zero width, 250Q. We're gonna change this down to 125, just let that dynamic notch just get a little bit lower, the default's 150. And then we're gonna constrain the dynamic notch to run in between 125 hertz and 350 hertz. Anything above that, the RPM notches are taking care of it anyway. So we're letting that notch get in there and it's really gonna handle a lot of the frame residences. You get that a lot with these whoops because of the ducts and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna constrain that dynamic notch to work within there to, to pick off those little frame resonances that might come up as you're moving around and things of that nature. So that's basically it for the Esheen US65 Pro. Uh, it's a nice little quad. It's fairly inexpensive. I think it's like 86 bucks or $85 uh, right now on Banggood. So check it out if you're in the market. Winter is coming up. If you got some kids, this is a great stocking stuffer. Uh, they would be more than happy with this. You know, not too long ago, a quad like this would have been like 200 bucks. So for 85 bucks, it's quite a deal. 
I did notice a lot better flight performance on Betaflight 4.2 with the PIDs. It's mostly the PID settings, honestly. The yaw gains in Betaflight 4.2 are a lot stronger, so it helps out a lot with whoops and washout. When I was on Betaflight 3.5.7 and I was doing inverted yaw, you know, a split S where it would go full throttle up and flip over and come down, it would yaw out a lot on me. And as soon as I upgraded the Betaflight 4.2 and, and applied those PIDs that I just showed there, that, that went away and didn't have that issue anymore. So I definitely recommend upgrading this just for that increase in yaw authority that comes along with, I think it was Betaflight 4.1 is when that change uh, was made to, uh, to bump up yaw authority a lot more, which helps out obviously with whoops in a big way. I hope this was helpful and checking out something new about it, some settings. I didn't want to just do a standard review. Uh, there's a lot of other reviews on this already. Uh, I'll link to some of those down below. Obviously, link in the video description for this quad if you're interested in picking it up from Banggood. Thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped.